Hey makers, we have a new pattern for you. We're in the holiday spirit and showing you our Christmas headband. We have this in our Christmas collection in our Etsy shop. It's actually in order. We celebrate Christmas, but of course, if you celebrate a different holiday or you want just something for everyday use, you can put it in any color you want because it's just a pattern. And it could be used for anything. I put it on, but again, this is for someone else. So let me just throw up a couple pictures of me and my cute daughter. <laughs> All right, you all ready? For this specific hat color, we are using our Lion Brand Basic Stitch Anti-Peeling Yarn. It asks for a H hook or five millimeter, and we are using three different colors today. Feel free to use whatever color you want. This is just for our Christmas hat pattern. We have olive, pomegranate, pomegranate grenade and taupe heather. I'll go ahead and give you some gauge measurements. Each side saddle is about seven eighths of an inch tall. When you get your border done, this is about um, a little bit, about one and a half to just over one and a half inches wide. The full length is 19 inches when not stretched out. When stretched out, oh man, I can get it all the way to about 25 and a half. And that's before it's braided. All right, start off. We're going to do a slip knot. Get your hook. Use the right end and chain six. That's just yarning over and pulling through your loop. One, two, three, four, five. Six. And then to start, you're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. One, two. Yarn over and pull through a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Single crochet. Keep the yarn on your hook though. Pro tip. Chain three, one, two, three. And then on this, we're gonna do a double crochet four together. And how you do that is you yarn over and then you're going to go into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Two loops on your hook, yarn over, you're going to go into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, three loops on your hook, yarn over, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, four loops on your hook, yarn over, go into the last chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. You have five loops on your hook, so you're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops, and then you're going to finish with a chain two. So that completes your first side saddle stitch. To do the next one, we are going to turn and we are going 
to do a single crochet into the top of the side saddle. So this is your chain three space right here. And this is the top of your side saddle in this little hole next to your chain two. This little hole right here. So you're gonna do a single crochet, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now chain three. Yarn over, do the four, the double crochet four together, you're gonna do into the chain three space. So everything from the rest of this stitch is gonna be done going into here. So you're gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. four loops, and five. Then you're gonna yarn over, pull through all five, and do two chains. And that is your second side saddle. You're gonna need a total of 26 side saddles, so that's 24 more. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done real quick. You just keep repeating this one 24 more times and I'll see you at the end to show you how to do the border. And we are done with the middle part. So we have 26 side saddle stitches here. And we are gonna go to do the border. I ended on a chain two gets a little crazy so bear with me and follow along you are going each side is going to be different because one's backwards the other one's forwards of course <laughs> all right so we're going to on this side saddle the first thing we're going to do is put a stitch right here in the first chain and these are all going to be I don't know why I'm yarning yarning over like that this they're all gonna be single crochet so put your hook through pull up a loop and pull through then the next one will be right here so I see this there's gonna be two on this big we got here one right here and one right here You don't want these to be too tight. So I do them a little looser than I'm actually used to doing. And tuck that up a little bit. So there's three of them. Now the next one's gonna go in this hole right here and see how there's a dip down right here. So this one I'm gonna make looser than the rest even. I'm gonna pull it up almost horizontal with the other ones and pull through and then we're going into this hole we're going into this hole right here again pulling it up pull through and then we're starting over so that is five stitches, five stitches per side saddle stitch all the way across. I'll do one more with you. So the first one is going in this loop right here. Then two in the top of the blob. This one gets kind of weird because it's like that. I honestly just shoved my hook through. I mean, you can get crazier if you want to and do something super hard where you have to shove your whole your your whole shove your uh crochet hook through the actual two top ones but it's pretty hard on that stitch so i do not i just shove it through wherever it will go 
So there's two on the top, then one in the big hole where I pull up high, and then one in this little small hole. You're gonna do that all the way across and I will meet you at the edge. All right, we got done with that side of our border and I just finished the last side saddle stitch ending with a single crochet in this little guy right here. For this edge, it's different on each one, but for this edge, corners, you're gonna do a chain one, and then you're just gonna make sure you have five single crochets in the top. There's one right here, and then there should be four stitches here, which makes this side easy enough. Ooh. Easy enough, right? <laughs> there we go. Now we're going to the curve. So we're gonna start the next side in the corner. Again, you're gonna chain one and then this I just weave in as I go, but I'm gonna get it out of our way for a second. So this is gonna be the same as the other side, but backwards. So first things first, this is the top of our blob. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two stitches in the top, maybe two stitches in, two single crochets in the top then we got a little loopy guy there I'm trying to get this out of the way so you can see then there's the little hole and the big hole Up. Little hole. Big. One more time. Two on top of the blob. One in the loopy guy. One in the small hole, pulling up. One in the big hole, pulling up. And then you're gonna do that all the way across and I'll meet you at the other end. I'm done, I'm gonna meet you here at the end where this chain three is, it's a little wonky. So I just finished in the small hole. And now I'm gonna do one more single crochet in the chain three, chain one to turn the corner, and we're going to do three single crochets in this chain space and two on the top of our side saddle. One, two, four, five. Now we are at the end. So I'm gonna chain one, turn, and slip, slip stitch into your first single crochet. Bam. So 
For this one, I'm going to make a long tail because I'm going to use it to sew. However much you want. I always make it way too long just to be safe. Now you have to do this three more times for this. So no big deal. We're just gonna we're just gonna channel our inner Christmas magic and they'll just appear. And I snap my fingers. <sighs> okay, that didn't work. Um I don't know. Maybe if I, ah, yeah, there they are. That worked, okay. Whew, I just had to ruin my camera lens for that. Okay, so we have three. I did it in the three different colors. And now we're gonna do a braid. Ready for some braiding lessons from your very favorite, also hairstylist, if you didn't know. You're gonna put them horizontally. It gets kind of weird. If you need to, you can have something to hold the top. Amateur, I'm just kidding. Seriously, you can just have something to hold the top. It makes it maybe a little bit easier considering, I mean, if you're braiding hair, normally it's attached to the head, so I guess that makes sense. But basically what you're going to do is fold over each one. So you're gonna take one on the outside and fold it over the middle. So you basically just switch it with the middle. Outside to the inside. Outside to the inside. Outside to the inside. So that's basically how that braid looks right there. You're gonna adjust it a little bit more as you go, but the first thing, you're gonna wanna make sure it's fairly snug. So make sure your ends are good. So I wrapped it all the way to the top like this and kept those ends together. Um, now if you have I don't even know if I grabbed any. Yeah. If you have something, you can stick through it to hold it in place. That will help. You can use um, anything you have on hand. Apparently, I'm using a hook right now. All right, and then you're going to want to turn it around and make sure this is all the way tucked in. So end to middle, outside in, outside in, outside in. And I think that's looking good right there. Now before I move on, I want to give you some kind of measurements here. This all folded up like this is about 14 inches. Now that doesn't seem very big considering generally it's about a 22 inch head circumference, but it does stretch quite a bit, which is why you want to make sure that braid is tight because if you don't do it tight and then it stretches, you are going to not have a super braided headband. So I'd give it a good stretch and then shimmy it up a little bit and make sure you have enough. I think I'm happy with that. I'm good with that. Now the crazy part. So first off, we got to tie in some ends because I'm only using my red yarn to tie in and the rest of these need to go. So I have my needle. This is what I use. It's just a little metal one. You use whatever's your flavor. You just got to get those ends tied in.
with our braid. All that's left to do is sew the sucker together. One thing I do want to note is you want to make sure that you're aware of your right side and your wrong side. You can decide which side you like better or if you want to mix them up. There's no right or wrong. Just be aware of it. We do ours on the right side, but I've actually done it on the wrong side before and it was just fine. I'm going to sew these in inside out. Sandwich it like that and grab your long string. I'm going to start with my long string on my right, turning it around. Now basically, you remember how we did five stitches across the top? Oh my gosh. There we go. Five stitches across the top. You're going to go through all five stitches across each one. So you have to make sure you don't miss one, which has happened to me many, many times. So I'm going to get this to the outside one. We'll start right here. All right. So I got that one. I always just count five across to make sure I'm starting where I want to. You can get lost in it sometimes, I feel like. So I have that done on the first one. Then I just go to the next one. You can cut across, but I don't on this because it is just a lot. You're going to go through this five times. I just sewed it through. Now I'm going to flip it right side so you can kind of see and pull tight. So that's what it looks like. I keep it nice and loose right there. Not really loose, it's very tight, but I don't sew this all the way across because I kind of like it to be a little bit smaller because this is going to sit in the nape of your neck. And my nape isn't too huge, so that's how I like it. And then, of course, we're going to want to secure it and tie in your end. This folded in half is 8 inches across. I can get it to stretch and measure at the same time. Then I'd say, I guess we can do this. We'll put this right here. We'll give it a stretch. Goes to about 12 inches. And then not to worry, goes right back down to eight. I hope you guys enjoyed our braided side saddle headband. It's so wonderful. Thank you for watching.
follow us on all of our social media platforms because we do really cool things there. If you go on TikTok, you can see Leanne, who is also the co-creator of this pattern. We work together as a team. She's amazing and funny. See you next Wednesday for a brand new pattern. I'm thinking it's an eggplant ornament kind of week. Bye.